In today's show, Bitcoin analysts expect another big move as Bitcoin price taps a new all-time high of $73,800. Make some noise for that, fam. Also in today's show, crypto gains now reach $37.6 billion in 2023, according to the latest Chainalysis report I'll be sharing with you. Also breaking news, the judge rules Craig Wright is not Satoshi. I'm not surprised, mother frickers. Just saying. We'll also be discussing MicroStrategy is on its second and fundraising ploy this month to buy yet an additional $500 million worth of Bitcoin after they just recently purchased 12,000 Bitcoin for $800 million the week prior. We'll also be discussing El Salvador dropping income tax for foreign investments and remittances. Also, $1 million Bitcoin price incoming very soon, predicts Bitcoin veteran Samson Mao. I'll be breaking down his timeline. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this plus so much more in today's show. But without further ado, if you're new to the channel, important to smash the subscribe button to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every day, seven days a week, just like this. Also important to pump the likes, to pump the stream. It helps out tremendously with the YouTube algorithm. Today is podcast episode 1579. I'm your host, JV, and it's March 14th, 2024. We hit yet another all-time high this morning during our pump watch. The new high on Coinbase is $73,800, 80000 in play. Absolutely. Yes, we corrected some. That's normal. Welcome to Bitcoin. But anyways, let's kick it off with our market watch as we do each and every day, family. As you can see on your screen, we got Bitcoin correcting, but still maintaining above 70 Gs, baby. ETH is dead even, still trading at uh, just under uh, 3,900. We have Solana, XRP, Cardano, and AVAX all pulling back and in the red. And checking out coinmarketcap.com, we're sitting on a 2.61 trillion market cap, meaning we're down 5% on the day. The 24-hour volume is on the rise. We're at $152 billion, and the Bitcoin dominance is back on the decline at 51.9%, with the Ether dominance at 17.2%. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers of the past 24 hours, we got ZRX, and shout out to DMX, rest in peace. Uh, it just rhymes, so what the heck. But anyways, it's up uh, 33% on the day. We have WIF up 25%, and Fetch up 11%. Below that, Aptos, WorldCoin, Ajax, and Pepe, as my brother refers to as PP. But anyways, let me know which altcoins you're most bullish on for this bull run family in that live chat. And checking out the crypto bubbles, as you can see, a visual perspective on the daily. The majority of the alts are correcting. And in the red, we got a handful of the meme coins, of course, busting out, but that's about it. And zooming out on the monthly, y'all must have forgot everything virtually is in the green. I'd say 97 out of the top 100 alts and some of these gainers are insane, surpassing over 7 per, 700%, as you can see in your screen. And checking out the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, we're back at an 88 in extreme greed. Now, why is this metric important? Why do I cover it every episode? Because the higher we get in extreme greed, the more likely of a pullback. Now, last week when we pumped like a mofo, surpassing 69,000 all-time high for the first time since 2021, we were a 90, and then we had a $10,000 correction, short-lived within 24 hours, we we're right back where we left off, but guess what? Today, we're an 88, and yet, we had what, uh, you know, a pretty small $4,000 correction, but just note, the higher this number gets, the more likely we are to correct, hence why we cover it so often, and checking out the Bitcoin halving countdown, we're only 33 days away from the biggest event that occurs every four years in crypto, and that's the Bitcoin halving, the estimated date at this time, scheduled to take place April 17th, literally one month and three days away. And checking out the time chain calendar. Did you know Satoshi referred to not blockchain, but as the time chain. And then for some reason, it got changed to blockchain. But Satoshi's original terminology was the time chain. So hence the time chain calendar. You can see the block height we're currently at, which is 834,708. You can see the conversion, $1 equals 1,428 Satoshis. You can see the Bitcoin market cap at $1.38 trillion. And you can see there's currently 19.65 million Bitcoin circulating, which is 93.59% of the circulating supply. But anyways, fam, or I should say of the total supply of 21 million. But anyways, fam, let me know where you feel the Bitcoin price action is likely to be by the time of the halving in the next 33 days. 
holla. But Nipsey may be giving a buy signal right now. And the paws go up. And they stay there. All right, the two previous times this happened where Nipsey gave that signal during the stream, we went to new all-time highs within 24 hours. Take that with a grain of salt. Take it for what it's worth. I'm just pointing out the obvious. He just gave us the next buy signal, yo. But anyways, fam, keep the interaction a coming. I appreciate it. But let's dive into some Bitcoin technical analysis, aka astrology for men. And yes, Nipsey says buy. Look at that. He's looking you in the eye as well as he puts his paws in the screen. He knows what he's doing at this point. Anyways, family, here we go. Uh, Bitcoin delivered yet another all-time high on March 14th as anticipation of further Bitcoin price upside continues to grow. Here we're looking at the Bitcoin one-hour candle chart. Uh, data from TradingView captured a new $73,800 record on Bitstamp right in alignment with Coinbase. Bitcoin had bounced back strongly overnight, erasing any trace of the weakness seen before the prior Wall Street open. And uh, Bitcoin dipped again earlier this week and once again successfully retested the all-time highs as support, as Red Capital points out here. Now, excitement around familiar supply trends continued on the day. This centered on the buy side impact of the U.S. spot Bitcoin ETFs. These saw net inflows of $683.7 billion on March 13th per data gathered from UK-based investment firm Farside. As outlined here in these charts, you can see highlighted March 13th, which shows yesterday's inflows. This far outpaced today's outflows from the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, firmly swinging a supply squeeze momentum in the bull's favor. And reacting, we have Willie Wu, creator of the Bitcoin data resource, Woodbull, describing the institutional products as just getting started. Echoing sentiment from Kathy Wood, CEO of the ETF provider, ARC invest. Quoting him here, the ETFs are just getting started. Institutional and wealth management platforms will take a couple of months to complete their due diligence before proper allocation begins. Now, in your mind, family, what do you think proper allocation looks like? And I just want to point out, a couple of years ago, BlackRock, world's largest asset manager, put out a report that their recommended Bitcoin allocation portfolio is 84.9%. I'll never forget it because I covered it various times here on the show. Now, if they actually put their mouth where their word is, or their word where their mouth is, or vice versa, however the saying goes, you already know what would happen if a $10 trillion asset manager allocated 85% of their assets under management into Bitcoin, next level family. But anyways, also the interest to the hodlers was news that tech firm MicroStrategy, currently the public company with the largest Bitcoin treasury, planned to amass more than 1% of the total Bitcoin supply. MicroStrategy currently owns 205,000 Bitcoin, intending to spend 500 million more, which is actually going to be another story we dive a little deeper into in a little bit. I believe their overall goal is to control 1 million Bitcoin, which would give them 5% of that circulating supply. And just FYI, right now you got MicroStrategy, the largest corporate treasury Bitcoin holder, but you also have BlackRock competing neck and neck. In fact, what took MicroStrategy four years to accomplish by stacking biddies now holding over 200,000, BlackRock just achieved in two months, which is mind-boggling, family. Now, despite some misgivings over whether the Bitcoin price action will be able to sustain the current momentum, bullish calls remain vocal on the day. We have Charles Edwards, founder of Quant Bitcoin Digital Asset Fund, Capriole Investments, who forecasts imminent fresh upside for Bitcoin. I repeat, imminent. Quoting him here, <laughs> Bitcoin's getting ready for a big move. And he also shared uh, or pronounced deep value era for Bitcoin dip buying as having come and gone and that the ship has sailed. Quoting him again, you had two years to pick up undervalued Bitcoin. Instead, an exciting new chapter has begun. So welcome to the next chapter, family. How many of you took advantage in the previous chapter and stacked some biddies? Let me know. Let's dive into our next story of the day, discuss some of the gains uh, in the crypto markets reached in 2023. According to Chainalysis, it was 37.6 billion dollars. That's right. Crypto investors returned to gains in 2023, pocketing billions in profits during the year after the prolonged downturn. According to a new report by blockchain analytics firm Chainalysis, the new estimates indicate realized gains, which are profits from selling assets for more than their purchase price, which reached uh, $37.6 billion last year, representing a significant recovery from realized losses of $127 billion in 2022. You can thank Bankman-Fried for that one. And relative to the latest bull market, however, 
the recovery is modest. In 2021, the crypto investors realized gains were roughly $160 billion. Quoting Chainalysis here from the report, interestingly, our total gains estimate for 2023 is lower than 2021, despite crypto asset prices growing at similar rates in each of those two years. One possible explanation for this could be that investors in 2023 were less likely to convert crypto assets into cash under the expectation that the prices would rise even higher. And throughout 2023, crypto gains were consistent with only two consecutive months of losses, which were August and September, when the U.S. crackdown on crypto companies was soaring. Gains soared again in November and December in anticipation of the approval of the Bitcoin ETFs. Now, the United States ranks first in a list by a wide margin with $9.36 billion in estimated realized gains over the year. The U.K. stands second with an estimated $1.4 billion in earned profits. Then Vietnam, China, Indonesia, India, Russia, and South Korea were amongst the other countries with realized gains of over a billion, quoting the report again. We also see several upper and lower middle income countries whose residents appear to have achieved outsized gains, especially in Asia, Vietnam, China, Indonesia, and India. For example, we previously noted that countries in these income categories and lower middle income countries in particular showed strong cryptocurrency adoption that remain notably resilient even through the recent bear market. Another statistic I saw earlier going through some of the headlines and some of the news stories is Bitcoin is minting 1,500 new Bitcoin millionaires per day in this bull market. That's what's up, family. And to become a, a Satoshi millionaire, it only requires you roughly 700 US dollars at this time. But I will tell you, we may be $1,500 to become a Satoshi millionaire by this time next month at the rate we're going. But anyways, fam, next story of the day, keep the comments flowing. Let's discuss Big breaking news. Fake Toshi is not Toshi. <laughs> what would Nick Diaz say right now? I think I got the clip right here. You just shook up the world. How's that feel? Hey, I'm not surprised, mother <laughs> I don't think anyone's surprised, but nonetheless, it's official. So this is a big deal. And before I even read into the story, I want to read you Jack, uh, the you know founder of uh, Twitter. Uh, you know, co original founder. Uh, here's what he wrote. I will make certain declarations which I am satisfied are useful and are necessary to do justice between the parties. First, that Dr. Wright is not the author of the Bitcoin white paper. Second, Dr. Wright is not the person who adopted or operated under synonym uh, Satoshi Nakamoto in the period of 08 to 2011. Third, Dr. Wright is not the person who created the Bitcoin system. And fourth, he is not the author of the initial versions of the Bitcoin software. Any further relief will be dealt with within my written judgment. I guess this is quoting then the judge, my bad. I will extend time for filing any appellant's notice until 21 days after the form of order hearing, which will be appointed following the hand down of my written judgment. And I ask that the parties to seek to agree and order given effect to what I have just stated. That's right, family. Historic news this morning. Craig Wright is not Satoshi Nakamoto, as actually, I guess this was, yeah, just today on the 14th. Closing arguments began in London on March 12th, and the lawsuit brought by COPA, lawsuit against Wright, an Australian computer scientist who claimed to be Nakamoto since 2016. COPA was seeking injunctive relief to prevent Wright from further claiming to be Nakamoto. Wright has been accused of massive document forgery for supporting the claim of being Bitcoin's founder, according to COPA's closing submission, Dr. Wright has been shown to have lied on an extraordinary scale. He has invented an entire biographical history, producing one tranche after another of forged documents to support this. So all you Satoshi Vision disciples, what do you got to say about this now? Yeah, for real. The trial began February 5th. Wright was offered to settle the case out of court January 24th, but COPA declined. COPA founded in 2020 to encourage the adoption and advancement of crypto tech and to remove patents as a barrier of growth and innovation. Its 33 members include Coinbase, Block, Meta, MicroStrategy, Kraken, etc. In 2023, the uh, Wright sued 13 core Bitcoin developers and a group of companies including Blockstream, Coinbase, and block for copyright violations relating to the Bitcoin white paper, its file format, and database rights to the Bitcoin blockchain. In response to the lawsuit, the Bitcoin Legal Defense Fund shared, for years, prominent contributors to the Bitcoin community have been the subject of abusive lawsuits. These lawsuits are frivolous, 
but a fact of many developers decided it's not worth the time, stress, money, and legal risk to continue working on Bitcoin. So leads me to this question. What should be the punishment for Dr. Wright and all those involved with this fake Toshi and forging of documents and screwing up all these Bitcoin core developers and going after them with frivolous lawsuits? There has to be consequences. That's my question for y'all. Now, Wright filed U.S. copyright registration for the Bitcoin white paper and the code within 2019. The Bitcoin white paper is now subject to an MIT open source license, allowing anyone to reuse and modify the code for any purpose. A court injunction would prevent Wright from further copyright claims on this. So there you have it, fam. Is anyone surprised? I think not, but it's good that we can finally put this past us finally. Anyways, fam, pump the likes, pump the stream. I appreciate it, family. Let's dive into our next story of the day. Let's discuss this 500 million buy by the man right here. People that use fiat currency as a store of value. We call them poor. That's right, Michael. MicroStrategy and its executive chairman, Saylor, are showing no signs of slowing down their Bitcoin buying spree, launching a new proposed offering of 500 million of convertible notes to acquire additional BTC. The business intelligence turned Bitcoin development firm announced its latest fundraiser March 13th yesterday, which will again come in a form of a private senior convertible notes offering. Some of it could also be used for general corporate purposes. As Saylor announced here on X, MicroStrategy announces proposed private offering of 500 million of convertible senior notes for MicroStrategy. Now, MicroStrategy, as we know, the largest corporate holder of Bitcoin in the world, now has made $1.3 billion worth of offerings over the last two weeks, including a now completed $800 million senior convertible note offering earlier in the week. That raise was initially announced as a $600 million offering. However, that figure was then bumped to $700 million and an additional $100 million to, yeah, a, basically purchase up an additional 12,000 BTC for their treasury reserve. Now its current stack of 205,000 biddies is worth $15 billion with the firm now up 8.1 billion, good Lord, or 117% on its investment. Not too shabby. Do you know people who use fiat currency as a store of value? You know what we call them? Fiat, 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 fiat currency. currency. We call them poor family. MicroStrategy is only 5,000 biddies away from holding at least 1% of Bitcoin's theoretical maximum supply. And based on current prices, the 500 million buy would give them roughly 6,850 Bitcoin. So they'd actually hit that target. We call them poor. poor. Tell them, Michael. We call them poor. Tell them, Michael. MicroStrategy senior convertible notes, debt securities that can later be converted into equity-like stock will accrue interest semi-annually and will mature March 15th, 2031, unless earlier repurchased, redeemed, or converted in accordance with the terms. The notes can be convertible into cash, shares of MicroStrategy's Class A common stock or a combination of the two. MicroStrategy stock, which you can see here in the chart, continues to rally, increasing 11% to 1,766 bucks March 13th, according to Google Finance. It is now up 254% since February 6th and has been one of the strongest performers on the NASDAQ this year. We call them poor. We call them poor. Thank you, Michael. MicroStrategy's rising stock price has been boosted by Bitcoin's recent rally, which has been seen for an increase of 46% from last month, surpassing a new all-time high this morning during our pump watch of over $73,800 per BTC. So there you have it, my crypto fam. What are your thoughts on MicroStrategy? selling more convertible notes, acquiring an additional half a billion dollars of Bitcoin like it ain't no thing and controlling 1% of the circulating Bitcoin supply. And we just smashed 71,000. Anyways, fam, let's dive into our next story of the day. And let's discuss El Salvador, thy savior. Yes, headline reads, El Salvador drops income tax for foreign investments and remittances. All hail. El Salvador. Imagine if like Biden ever said, we're going to reduce your taxes. It's just something you would never hear the man say. So respect to Bukele here, yo. The Legislative Assembly of El Salvador has approved a measure to reduce the income tax on foreign investments and remittances from 30% to zero with no effective limits on the amount. President Nigel Bukele relayed the news on X. Uh, here's what he shared. Congress has reformed our income tax law for international investments and money transfers, dropping the rate from 0%, I'm sorry, from 30% 
to Cerro, which is zero family. That's pretty remarkable. Long live Nigel Bokele. I mean, who does this? Who is trying to reduce taxes and actually doing it as a form of a government for their people? Nobody except Bukele. Prove me wrong. In a separate post, the Assembly Legislative uh, of El Salvador said the measure was approved with 69 votes out of presumably 84. And per the translation uh, from the Spanish by Google, here's what they said. With 69 votes in favor, we reform the income tax law so that family remittances or any capital from ab abroad is introduced into the country free for payment of this tax regardless of the amount. So now your family living in another country can send money to their family in El Salvador without any taxes. That's pretty lit. Now, obviously, you can also do so with Bitcoin, right? And there's no middleman. Hence, Bitcoin is borderless family. El Salvador has experienced radical change in the wake of Bukele's 2019 election. And in 2021, he declared Bitcoin legal tender throughout the country and purchased 200 biddies for its coffers. In the subsequent years, El Salvador's economy has shown steady growth. In 2019, its gross domestic product was $25 billion, according to World Data Bank. And by 2022, it reached $32.4 billion. And estimates also indicate $2.8 percent growth for 2023. Now, El Salvador's 2021 Bitcoin purchase has generated 85 million worth of profit since Bitcoin crossed the 72,000 threshold this week. Now, this most recent tax code adjustment comes after El Salvador removed all taxes related to tech innovation in April of 2023. And as reported, the country passed the bill to effectively eliminate income, property, and capital gains taxes on technology innovations, such as software programming, coding, apps, and AI development, as well as computing and communications, hardware, manufacturing. Hence, El Salvador is the Bitcoin hub of the world. It's the Bitcoin citadel. It's Bitcoin city. And it will continue to do what it do. Now as a bonus, why Max Kaiser is the legend. If you don't know, check it. Personal advisor, El Salvador's President Bukele, and Bitcoin hodler since it was under a dollar. Here's the receipts, family, because I, I like to speak about Max a lot, and some of you guys don't really understand how remarkable it is to have this guy as a you know proponent for Bitcoin the way he is and what he stands up for, what he represents, and what he has done for the entire Bitcoin community. How many Bitcoin millionaires were birthed as a result of the Kaiser Report? Let that sink in, family. Millions of people. Check this out. December 4th, 2010, Max became the first mainstream journalist to profile Bitcoin. The price was 30 cents. 30 cents. That means you could have bought three biddies for a dollar, family. Three biddies for a dollar. Holy moly. And then by 2011, Max was openly discussing why Bitcoin was a threat to the government currencies. 20. 11, right? And it don't stop. When Bitcoin was a dollar in 2011, Max told gold investor Peter Shifty to buy the biddies. He didn't. And now Max trolls him every day relentlessly. And you got to love it. Got to love the entertainment factor of the Kaiser, yo. And in 2011, Max declared Bitcoin the biggest story of the decade. He was right. You're damn right. And in 2012, Max told Tim Pool to buy Bitcoin. He is now an investor and an advocate. Facts. And at $30 in 2013, Max became one of the first Bitcoin millionaires in the world. Now run the math. How many <laughs> hundreds of millions or billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin do you think the high priest has if he didn't lose it all in a boat accident? Oops, sorry. Tax that. But just point out the obvious. And in 2014, Max gave podcast to Russell Brand a thousand Bitcoin for free, and he lost them. They'd be worth 70 million today. He also gifted 10,000 biddies to Alex Jones. He lost them. That'd be worth like over a half a billion dollars today. Oops, sorry, they're gone. Tax that. And of course, the president of El Salvador gave him a Bitcoin cake on his birthday. I love Max. I love Stacy. Love what they represent. Love their work. Love what they're doing. And then in 2022, Max offered to pay Mexico's third richest man to put a Bitcoin logo on his personal jet. And of course, Max played a large part in orange pilling Ricardo Salinas, who is also a major Bitcoin advocate. And uh, Max went on stage at the Bitcoin conference and did this after Tesla sold. F. Elon. Y'all remember the F. Elon tour family? But anyways, let me know your thoughts on the one and only high priest of Bitcoin, 
Max Geyser. Now let's discuss our featured story of the day. The headline reads, $1 million Bitcoin price incoming very soon, predicts Bitcoin veteran Samson Mao. Here's his timeline and when we can anticipate a seven-figure Bitcoin price action. Here we go. The CEO of Bitcoin-focused tech firm Jan3, Samson Mao, is predicting the Bitcoin can reach that seven-figure Bitcoin price. Mao says in an appearance on What Bitcoin Did Pod that the flagship crypto asset can go up 1,264% from the current level over the next couple of months. Quoting him here, I think this year we're going to hit $1 million per coin, if not this year, next year, but it is coming very soon. Let me know if you agree or disagree with Samson Mao. And according to the Jan 3 CEO, the existing market conditions are informing his bullish thesis for Bitcoin, as he shares here. The whole setup we have right now is perfect for a run-up. You have demand far outstripping supply, and supply is about to be cut. You know having is in a month. The spot Bitcoin ETFs alone are pulling in about 22,000 BTC. So demand is like 10x. Now it's going to be 20x. So the price should really react accordingly. Mao says that the Veblen effect, a concept that states that as the price of the good rises, the demand increases, resulting in an upward sloping demand curve where demand rises in tandem with the rising price, which could also play a role in helping Bitcoin continue to appreciate. Quoting him again, even if that doesn't happen, you have the concept of the Veblen effect. As Bitcoin becomes more valuable, it just becomes more desired because it is valuable. And there is a threshold at which you cross. I think that threshold is probably parity with the gold market cap, which is about $450,000 to $500,000 a coin. Once you cross that Veblen threshold, you start to demonetize gold because now this thing is gold. Then you start to eat into gold because people see it as equivalent to gold. It's the new gold. And I think the media narratives will say the same thing. That's an important threshold when we pass gold. That's the point at which gold Gold starts dropping and people start moving the value they stored in gold into Bitcoin. Tell them. And to watch the interview he recently did on the What Bitcoin podcast with Peter McCormick, check the show notes below the video in the description. But I want to know your thoughts, family. Will Bitcoin eat away at gold's market cap? What's the gold market cap right now? Can someone look it up? I'm going to guesstimate probably in the $14 trillion level. Let me know. Right now, the Bitcoin market cap is a modest, what, 1.3 trillion? That means we're going to do another 10x to battle gold. And I think the battle will be pretty triumphant as far as a victory because gold is ultimately the poor man's Bitcoin. Bitcoin or gold? No brainer. Difference, major difference, gold is confiscatable. Remember that Gold Confiscation Act in 1933 where they stole all the gold from you and it was illegal to hold it? Well, if they did it once, your enemies can do it again. With Bitcoin, unfortunately, for the powers that be, they can't touch it, especially if it's in self-custody. That's why we preach self-custody, family. You got a self-custody. Here we go, $14.5 trillion, the market cap of gold right now. Thank you, family. So you already know, Bitcoin will continue to eat away at gold, and it's inevitable to steal its market cap and value because the difference... Gold, yeah, it's a pretty decent store of value. It's been around for thousands of years. The central banks love to hoard it. We know that as a fact. But what's the difference with Bitcoin? Not only is Bitcoin a superior store value asset, but it appreciates unlike anything we've ever seen before. Because the difference, finite limited supply. True scarcity with Bitcoin, relative scarcity with gold. So would you rather have an asset where they can't print more of, or would you rather have an asset where they'll continue to find more in the earth and dump more into the open market to continue to suppress the price, just like Jamie Demon's company, JP Morgan Chase, is known to do, and they've paid upwards of over $900 million fines for manipulating precious metal markets? The choice is yours. I'm going to go with the unconfiscatable asset. I don't want the confiscatable asset. I want the apex predator. I want the best store of value, right? I don't want the relative scarce asset. I want the truly scarce asset. I want the only form of money they can't print more of. The only form of money that has a finite limited supply of 21 million. They can continuously find more gold. Do you understand that? Elon could invest money into finding gold on asteroids for all we know and be like, yo, we just found another 2010,000 quadrillion tons of gold. Oh, well, You know what I mean? Now, what are your thoughts on that? And where do you feel the Bitcoin price will likely be by the time we eclipse 
the gold market cap. I think we can easily be in the millions. I want to know your thoughts. I remember the Winklevoss twins. They made the case for a $500,000 Bitcoin several years back, previous cycle. And uh, they ultimately said Bitcoin's going to eclipse gold. And that's why Bitcoin's going to be valued at over 500000 per coin. I'll dare say we'll be valued at over a million per coin by this time. And I think it can happen a lot sooner than later. I think a lot of people are waking up. I think people want to park their assets in the apex predator, right? Why would you want to park your asset in something that's going to remain the same, which is gold? It's been roughly at $2,000 for the past decade. Give or take, it goes up and down, of course, a little bit. But nonetheless, Bitcoin has appreciated from nothing 15 years ago, and it's now $71,000 per Bitcoin. And we're not slowing down anytime soon. I can foresee into the future. I'm not psychic, but I have a brain right? And I can see this thing hitting $10 million per coin, right? Easy peasy in my lifetime. I can see this thing hitting $100 million per coin. I can see one Satoshi being a dollar. I can see that in my lifetime. Why wouldn't it be with a $700 trillion total adjustable market? It's the only asset commodity that, number one, right? Finite limited supply. It's immutable. They cannot change it. No dirty politician can change the code, amen for that. Not even fake Toshi can change the code, amen to that, right? Unconfiscatable, which makes it priceless in my opinion with all the corruption within the governments and the forces of evil out there. Um, it's borderless. You can actually travel with it. You can remember your seed phrase, go anywhere in the world, and no one can take it from you. And bigger picture on a macro level, Bitcoin represents peace, prosperity, and love, Look at the nation of El Salvador from the most violent, you know what I mean? From the most mur the murder capital of the world. Back when I used to live in Costa Rica a long time ago, they'd all say, don't go to El Salvador. I'd like to visit through Central America. They say, don't go to El Salvador. Do not go to El Salvador. It's the, most, it's the murder capital. It's the most dangerous place to go. Now it's the safest nation in the Americas. What changed? Bukele adopted Bitcoin as a legal tender. That's what changed, and everything changed alongside it. What does fiat currency perpetuate? War, violence, poverty, and all that ish that comes along with it that we don't want, right? So how do we change the world? We get them on a Bitcoin standard, right? Shout out Lock Sky just gifted five memberships to the channel. Congratulations to everyone that just got hooked up. Dusty Tonez, Mar. They 2.2, Eric Castro, and Croy Boy, you've all been blessed, as well as Ayo, Doe. So thank Lock Sky for hooking that one up. But yeah, yo, there's a difference there. Do you, do you like war? Do you believe in war? And do you like being poor? Or do you believe in freedom, sovereignty, love, peace, prosperity, right? Opulence and all those beautiful things. The choice is yours, family. Holla at your boy.